hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, this is my review recap for American Horror Stories Season 3, Episode 1, Bestie. Child, this is that old tale, okay? The things that you have been warned about since you was a kid. Don't talk to strangers, especially weirdos online, okay? Do not, I repeat, do not ignore the red flags flying in your face. Pow, 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 okay? And also, y'all, all right, you know how they used to say, monkey see, monkey do, all right? If I jump off the bridge, will you jump off one too? Well, Shelby, girl, okay? Apparently, it's like, yes, Tamika, yes, I will. And I said, okay, girl, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna watch you be a fool, <laughs> okay? That is what this story is all about. Child, let's go ahead and get into it. Break it on down. Take it from the top. You know how we do. So, y'all, we have this girl named Shelby, okay? Apparently, she has just recently lost her mother to cancer. Her and her dad are over here moving into a new house, all right? We started out the episode with seeing that there's some type of school play, stage play. We got kids on stage. We got some witches. We got some wizards. We got a big old moon. We got, you know, the big pot with the smoke coming out and we drinking up this potion, but really it's poison. Okay. Poison is in this. Okay. But we don't know who did it. Then we go to three months earlier and we see him Shelby moving in this new house with her dad. First, we like, are we moving in? Are we moving out? We don't really know, right? We just see the moving truck and all the boxes. And she's over here watching somebody named Anna, an influencer that she apparently likes on her, you know, phone. And her dad asked her, like, are we keeping this bill? Are we getting rid of it? You know, she's talking about some, oh, no, I don't play with it no more. But when he said he was going to donate it, she was like, just because I don't play with it don't mean I want it to go in the trash either. I said, well, Shelby, girl, make up your mind. Nobody can't read your mind. All right, girl. We also see that she has been getting teased. Okay, nobody like her. We talking about her hair. We talking about her glasses. We talking about the way she looks, the way she talks, the way she sings. We don't like nothing about her. All right, and so we have a teacher that's reaching out to her trying to bond with her trying to make her feel like he understands where she's coming from what she's going through because you know daddy gave her the breakdown of remember what the doctor said okay when you lose somebody to cancer it's not just them that suffers it's not just them that it affects it affects us as a family it affects the community but we still gotta push through all right and as we are watching anna on this phone you know, we're also hearing her tell us how we have to make it do what it do. Okay, don't worry about what others say about us and all that different kind of stuff, right? And we see that she is into singing and apparently used to sing and perform in her old school. And so the teacher is bringing that up and he's just trying to really motivate her and tell her that she's brave just like her mother. You know, he's asking what kind of cancer the mom had and she's like pancreatic and you know, he's like, oh, that's awful. You know, I know that that's real hard. And he knew her mother as well. So he's just telling her, you know, how she always brightened up everybody's day. He also starts to tell her how he lost a child so he knows what it feels like to lose someone. You know, sometimes it's hard to get through it, but it's not impossible. As long as she keep moving, she will get through it or whatever, right? So she's trying to ignore these kids that's teasing her but of course she has her moment where it's like it's enough all right i'm tired of your bull crap i'm not gonna take it no more and we trying to find out you know how we could go ahead and get back to you huh? all right the way y'all busy giving it to me and at home her dad keeps trying to get through to her and find out like what exactly is happening what are you feeling did something happen at school and we noticed that her and her dad bond over this cup that says teacher of the year that you know her mom got and so later on when we online watching anna because apparently that's what we love doing in our free time we have this bff forever that starts inboxing us and messaging us and saying why don't you come on video so that we could go ahead and talk and at first she's like nah i don't want to go on video because i've been crying and you know bff forever is like don't worry about that so when she show her face on the screen child okay we see why she said don't worry about that honey i would have clicked that damn thing right back off i'm sorry because this is the form person <laughs> popped up all right 
And it did not give me a child at all. They gave me a grown ass woman. All right. And it was funny because in the synopsis, they say that Shelby is a young woman. I said, well, I guess technically she a teenager and this broad look old. Okay. I don't know if she was supposed to be old. They didn't say her exact age. She acting like she a damn kid, but it definitely was not giving me child. Nonetheless, I digress moving right along. She starts to ask her about you know, what you in there doing, what you been up to. And, you know, she's saying how her daddy been getting on her nerves and oh, you know, BFF start talking about, yeah, my dad get on my nerves too. Okay. My dad and your dad probably could have a competition on who's the most annoying. You know, she asking her about the bed that she got on the bed and she's basically like, oh, you know, that's just the old bed that I used to play with. And she starts to say how she got one too. Now, when we ask what your real name is, BFF don't want to say what her real name is. She over here talking about some, let's have nicknames for each other. You know, I'm going to call you Shelly Belly and you going to call me Bestie. So now I said, no girl, mm -mm, I wouldn't have went for that. I would have said, mm -mm, what's your name girl? Okay. Because no, you're not my bestie. I don't know you, but that's not what Shelby does. Okay. Shelby gets wrapped up into this person. This is her only friend. You know, we doing makeup and we showing into each other and all of that and she like girl yes work it okay you need to go to school like that Shelby was saying she looked like a freak but she was like no you look amazing and she was like no I can't wear this to school so then we go are you afraid okay what does Anna say about people that's being afraid she say you gotta you know go ahead and conquer them fears the more afraid of it you are the more that means that you should do it. So she was like, you know, people going to say that I look crazy. She was like, you worried about what people going to say? You shouldn't be scared. I said, okay, I could get with that. You know, that makes sense. She got a point there. But honey, we ain't going to stop there. This is just the beginning. We're going to start with something light. So now, of course, she does go to the school with the makeup on. Now, not as much as she originally had when she was home. But she got her makeup on. You know, she feeling more into herself. Okay, got the hair all up and she He's really not caring what the kids got to say now. And so next thing, you know, we get back home and we like, yo, that went good. You know, the teacher done asked about her joining up with the play and she like, you know, I'm going to see. I don't know. I'm not too sure whatever. And she, of course, goes to talk to Bestie and is saying, you know, oh, well, I don't know whether I should join or not. And she's telling her she should. Now we get into why do you look so deformed? What happened to you? And we find out that Bestie Mama was out here doing them drugs. OK, she was on them drugs and Bestie got affected by it mentally, physically, you know, and with her developments and everything like that. And that's why she's deformed. She's basically had to be homeschooled and be in her bed most of the time. So, of course, you know, this basically makes Shelby really, really sad. She's apologizing and, you know, just feeling bad for her that she even had to experience this and go through this. And she like, that's OK, because we friends. OK, we got each other now. Friends to the end. <laughs> right. We going to hold each other down and I'm going to live vicariously through you. So. Next thing you know, she starts telling her about how, you know, oh, I played a joke on my dad or whatever. I hit his wallet. He was looking all over for it and he didn't know where it was. You know, since they so annoying, we need to do something that could get back at them. Right. And we talking about the craziest things we ever done. Just sharing our deepest, darkest secrets. And in the meantime, her and her dad are getting further and further apart. And she's cursing him out and telling him to leave her alone, slamming the damn door on her face all the while getting closer and closer to dag on bestie all right and so she ends up telling her like you know since your dad is so annoying why don't you do something similar to what i did and she's like well i can't you know how his wallet or take his keys or none of that kind of stuff because my dad works a lot of hours or whatever the case may be he's going a lot you know that's not gonna work and here we go again well you gotta do something you know what could you possibly do are you afraid okay we need you to do something out here in these streets. So why of all the things that she could have done, she takes the cup that she knows means a lot to her dad. That's the one thing that they share, that they reminisce over the mom about, you know, the teacher of the year cup and breaks it to little itty bitty pieces. OK, this is what she decides she going to do. And every time you turn around, her dad is asking her, did you see the cup? Did you know what happened to the cup? And we just going to keep saying, you know, no, we don't know. And now we have this small idea. OK, we don't 
don't know what it is yet. But Bestie said, I got an idea. Okay, yeah, you're going to go ahead and you're going to join that play or whatever the case may be. And you also, it's almost Halloween. You're going to come into the school with a little costume. I got a little, you know, a couple tricks up my sleeve that you can use. So, baby, come to find out that three months earlier when we were seeing the kids getting poisoned and them throwing up their damn guts, it was Shelby, okay, with the bright idea from Miss Bestie to poison the kids. And she running outside, hiding and laughing to me. It was so damn obvious they knew it was her anyway. But she over here talking about, well, I can't go back because they're going to know it's me. So, at this point, she's getting trouble at, you know, she's getting in trouble at the school. And as if that wasn't bad enough, she take her behind back to school and her Halloween costume, honey. All right. Mind you, we don't see it at first. It just looks like she's all draped up and covered with this big cloak on. Everybody else got their costumes on. When she throws it off, she decided, okay, to go up in this school, paint her face blue and have the damn what's supposed to be an umbilical cord around her neck along with a big ass on um, pacifier. And she's supposed to be the damn teacher's baby that died. I said, really? And she over oh, yeah. here, I said, Shelby, that's what you thought was a good idea. You really Really ain't got the sense God gave a roast that you let your bestie, okay, supposedly talk you into going to school like that. And the teacher basically dismisses the whole class and tells Shelby, I'm going to forgive you one day, okay? It's not going to be today, but honey, you bugging out, all right? So, of course, her dad is pissed. He come in. He taking the phone and everything from her. He put her down in the basement. He like, you going too damn far. Was not nothing funny about this? She keeps saying over and over how it was a joke. Everybody looking at her like she got three damn heads. And she's wondering why they all looking at her like this. And amongst them, we see this boy that's staring at her. Just so happens to be the same boy that's staring at her and catches, apparently, he the only one that seemed to notice that she was the one that poisoned the girls. Keep that in mind, right? And so now when she's stuck down in the basement, Bestie over here talking about, well, girl, we got to figure out a way to get in out of here, okay? He cannot keep you here, all right? We going to have you hurt yourself because if you hurt yourself, he would have to let you out of here and take you to the damn hospital. And she like, oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Picking up the damn hammer talking about, you know, you really want me to do that? And what does it take only for Bestie to say, are you afraid? You know what Annie says. Anna says about us being afraid okay you have to face your fears and that has to make you know you go even harder if you do that you're gonna get your father's attention he gonna have no choice but to come out and let you out so of course her dumb, dumb behind what does she do she go ahead and break her freaking arm with a dag on him and daddy gotta come busting in the freaking door running down there to take her to the hospital now she got a cast on and now she's finally feeling like she went too far finally waking up okay from bestie now we want to ignore her calls we want to ignore her texts we want to block her on whatever we could block her on and we want to go back to the school looking for the teacher only to find out now you don't got the teacher where he's depressed and he had to freaking call out of work it's not even funny so he ain't there it's some other substitute teacher in his place and you like oh okay you know you didn't know you coming in with a i'm sorry card and some flowers for him or whatever right and so now it's like we going on this damn apology tour but in the meantime as we walking away we bump into where we meet okay and find out is mr river who was the same boy that was looking the other two times and he's asking can he sign the cast now it's so funny because he uses the same phrase my friend okay my friend to the damn end that you know bestie was using and at the same time she keeps getting these random texts from bestie where it's like you know girl i know you ain't ignoring me we still friends you can't just leave me in the dust like that you know she don't went and tried to freaking glue the damn cup back together that was her mother's that she broke up and her dad basically says that's the start so you know, we really trying to make a new men's and change our ways now and be on our best behavior and tell everybody I'm sorry, except for bestie, bestie, we trying to stay the hell away from. So anyway, you know, in the midst of getting these texts and having him just randomly come up and say how he want to sign her damn cast all of a sudden and he's using the same phrases, I'm giving him the side eye. I'm saying, what's going on with this river? Something mean, right, right? And he talking about how he on the choir too and he learned professionally from his mom and it's nice to meet her and he's like, cool. So 
when he signed the cast, he basically signs it River, his name. And I was like, hmm, don't we usually say, like, um, Phil Bedham? Okay, hope you get back right soon. Something along them lines. I just thought that was weird. And all of a sudden, we also have in common, okay, we both like to watch Anna, the influencer, when we got time. So it's like, oh, we both like the same people. Cool. Oh, let me sign your cast. Cool. We're friends now, right? You're my bestie. I said, girl, if that ain't a damn red flag, I don't know what it is. But Shelby said, no, I don't see nothing here, nothing to see here at all, okay? And right after he's walking away, she get another text that's telling her of time and place to be in this auditorium. When she get into the auditorium, mind you, when he walking away, he's saying bye bye friend. And she look all nervous and shook and looking around, but she still don't follow her damn instance. Okay. She go to the place that it tells her to go when he's there. You know, now he's talking about girl, I've been watching you for a year, but don't think I'm a stalker or nothing because I'm not. And, you know, I like your style and I see the things that you've been doing. I know you poison them kids and I'm not mad at you for it because they was over here just bullying people, you know, that have disabilities or whatever. So she like, wait, you got a disability? I didn't know you had a disability. He like, yeah, I was actually born with my heart on the outside of my body and I had to have four surgeries. And by the time they took all these hours and pushed it back in, my heart went in and my ass came out. I said, well, damn. And he took him out. Is that TMI? So now he's telling her, you know, at the end of the day, because she was like, well, damn, you know, you don't want to blackmail me or nothing. And he like, nah, why would I want to do that? OK, what you did as far as poisoning them, you actually helped because they was out of line. OK, they was doing too much. So he wasn't mad at that at all. Right. Again, he claiming that he just want to be her friend to the end. So, OK, this apparently starts a friendship between them. And we still just trying to ignore all these texts and calls that we getting from Bestie. We hanging tough now with River. You know, we doing the school play and all of that. That's going good. We made a change. OK, a whole complete change around. We getting all these different accolades and, you know, Good praises from the teacher saying how far you could go and how far you have came and how you a straight A student and all this and that. Right. One C in gym, but we ain't going to count that. That's not important. And dad is super proud of her. He's saying all the colleges that she could go away to and she's like, hold up. Wait a minute. You know, no, I don't want to go away to college. I can take classes anywhere. I just want to be closer to river. All right. I finally feel like I'm in a good place. I feel like I'm with somebody that I could trust the best thing since cook damn rice and that's where I want to be. And for whatever reason, okay, I guess daddy was just happy to see his daughter happy now. He go ahead and agreed to it. So she come into River talking about some, oh, my dad agreed to it. You know, I could go away with you and be with you at school. And he's like, really? Okay, cool. Great. You know, let's go for it. Right. And he tells her that, you know, well, he notices first before that that she's been getting all these different messages on her laptop now she's been able to block it out everywhere else but for some reason when it comes to the laptop she can't stop it from coming on near and so he like oh i got you and he knows how to do the magic one two three and make it all disappear so now he's telling her he got a surprise for her. They go riding in this van of his and she keeps saying, this is creepy. I don't know what this place is. What's going on? I don't like it here. I don't like this. I got a bad feeling. I said, girl, listen to your feelings. Meanwhile, River talking about some. It's OK. I really want to show you this. You know, she talking about some hold me and he's saying, don't be a scaredy cat. I'm right here. But at the same time, he got this funny look on his face. Like if he's confused, too, he opening up, mind you, this gate. OK, that have to go across this whole big ass field to these spooky looking houses and he letting her go first and he walking behind looking like he leery and scared to go in then when she go in she looking all around she's still saying what is this he's talking about i don't know but how the hell you don't know if this is supposed to be a surprise that you bringing me to that you want to show mr river i said girl shelby you don't fell for the okie doke okay so when she get in the house, as she keep looking and looking and looking, she noticed in a hospital bed, an IV, then things are starting to look more familiar. Like, wait a minute, what? Hold up. Okay. I done seen this stuff before. A lot of these things in this background is looking real familiar to me. And we got a ring light here. And lo and behold, who the hell house y'all think he done brought her to? Okay. Miss Bestie. <laughs> Child. Miss Bestie was bringing her behind down them stairs. Okay. Walking on down. They creaking and creaking and creaking. 
River looking nervous as hell, looking all around. We seeing damn pictures, you know, chair and all of that stuff that we can clearly remember from when we used to be talking to her online. And then we turn around and lo and behold, honey, she coming down the damn stairs, you know. Shelby over here talking about River, what are we doing here and trying to run? And he like, calm down, calm down, calm down. Okay, and Miss Bestie stepped down and said, you know, <laughs> Hey, girl, you thought you was getting away from me, you know? Be brave, Shelby, okay? Be brave. Child feet and everything looking crazy as hell. So, River standing down here or whatever, don't want to let her out the door, baby, the way I would have knocked River out the way, Shelby. You wasn't fighting enough for me at all, okay? And, um, you know, Bestie comes down the damn stairs and she's like, Hello, friend. <laughs> baby Shelby tried to run again and River went ahead and said, okay cut her cut her cut her cut her shelby is up out of here honey that friend to the end <laughs> is the end then um you know river telling daggone bestie well i did it everything's done it's finished now and bestie talking about some yeah now me and you could be best friends you know shelby over here whoa before she passed the hell out and he just basically you know, ends up leaving with Zan Bestie with her saying now they gonna be together forever, ever, ever <sighs> to the end of time, child. That was basically, you know, the episode, okay? He was saying it's over, it's all over. I brought her to you. I did what you told me to do. That's it. That's all, folks. We can be together, together forever, 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 forever. <laughs> I said, y'all didn't have to take Shelby out like that. <laughs> <coughs> child. Shelby, that's on you, girl. But that was the episode, y'all. I did not, you know, care that much for this first episode. Like the other ones a little bit better, you know. Um, they only have four this season. Put out these four for the, you know, Halloween festivities. I'm assuming, right? And so I did review the first. I mean, the second season. I should say I wasn't on YouTube when the first one was going around. So I figured I would hop up here. And just talk about these four episodes. What did y'all think about this one though? What did you like? What you didn't like? All that good stuff. Put it in the comments if I missed anything. Put that in the comments. We will talk about it down there. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Till next time y'all. Toodaloo.